Hi, my name is Brad Bearden. I'm an implementation specialist with Activate, and this video will cover the sales order window. If you haven't already watched it, we have a video covering the sales quote window. A sales quote can be converted into a sales order, therefore a lot of the fields are similar. The sales quote video covered those fields in depth. This video will focus more on the specific fields to the sales order. The first thing we need to do is open the sales order window. You can do that by clicking the sales order icon on the toolbar, or you can go to the sales menu and choose sales order. Once the sales order window opens, we can look up an existing sales order by clicking the magnifying glass to the right of the order number field, or we can create a new sales order by clicking the new button in the upper left hand corner. After clicking new, the cursor is going to move down to the customer field. You can type in a customer if you know the customer's name, or again you can click the magnifying glass to the right of the customer field to look up an existing customer. If you type in a customer's name that does not exist in Activate, you will be asked if you would like to create that customer. In this case, I'm going to look up an existing customer. Once you select a customer, several of the fields may default based on how the customer is set up. In this case, I have a billing, shipping, and contact information set up for the customer, so that automatically populates, as well as the terms and branch. If you have multiple locations set up for the customer, you can choose one of the locations by clicking the drop down menu next to the location field. Selecting another location will change the shipping address. Feel free to fill in any of the other information you have, including the customer's PO number or reference. I can now begin adding my products. To add a product, I'll click on the product ID field and either type in the product ID or look up a product. After adding this product in a quantity order to 50 each is, I see that 40 are scheduled and 10 are on back order. Since we have some quantity on back order, we have an option. We can look to see what the availability is at another warehouse if available, or we could choose a substitute if this product has a substitution configured for it. First, we'll take a look at the availability by warehouse, and to do that, we'll click the drop down in the warehouse field. Here I can see that we have 500 available in the D warehouse. In that case, I could switch to the D warehouse if that is an acceptable option. In this case, I really can't ship out of the D warehouse because it's in a different location. So instead, I'm going to look at the substitutions. If I click the substitutions button, the new window will open up displaying a list of acceptable substitutes. A preferred substitute can be defined as well as an effective and expiration date for that substitution. Here I can see the available quantities for both substitutes. Since B85-2 is my preferred substitute, I'm going to select that. And now line 1 is no longer on back order. Pressing enter will move me down to the next line and put my cursor in the product ID field. This time I'll type in my product ID. I'm going to add a third item. The third line is on back order and I do not have any substitutions available. We can see that by the substitutions button being grayed out. In addition to the three products, I also want to add a note line. And to do that, I'll click in the type field to the left of the product ID. In the drop-down that appears, I have some options. You may or may not have the same options due to the modules that you are licensed for. Everyone has access to the note line. So to enter a note line, we click the note description. Next, we would place our cursor in the description field and type our note.
Customer Apex is configured to default to the D price code when available. In this case, all three products are eligible for the D price code, so they did default to that price code. However, you could manually override the price or click in the price code field to select one of the other available price codes. For line three, I want to give the R price code, which is the distributor price. I'll now add some special instructions, which are internal instructions. And now I'll add shipping instructions. If at any point, either during order entry or at a later date, you need to edit the lines of the order, you can move, insert, or delete lines. To do that, we'll click the Move icon, which will display a menu showing the different options. To the left of the detail lines, I can see a black arrow, which indicates which line I'm on. So if I choose Move Row Up, it will move line three up in this instance. On the detail tab of the order, we also have the requested date, which is the customer's requested ship date. This will default out to a future date based on the configuration settings and configuration manager. In this case, my default is seven days in the future. You can override this if you wish, or you can let it default to seven days. If I flip to the shipping tab, I'll see some more date fields. On the shipping tab, I see that this order has seven days left to ship. That is based on the requested date. However, I also have a promise date. The requested date represents the date their customer is requesting it to be shipped by. The promise date is the date that I am promising I will have it shipped by. The promise date is the date I'm promising I can have it shipped by. If I have the requested and promise date set, the promise date will be used to calculate the number of days left. For example, I'm going to promise that it will be shipped by August 20th. Now you can see that the days left to ship has been increased to eight. I also can set a not before and not after. This would be the do not ship before this date and the do not ship after this date range. These dates are used when batch printing pick tickets. At the time of order entry, if I have payment information, I could enter it in on the payment tab. The payment will remain here until I create the invoice for this order. Until that point, the payment will not sync over to QuickBooks. In this case, I do not have any payment information, and I have completely filled out all the information I have for this order. Now that I have entered in all the information I have for this order, I can save it. But first, this order is ready to be picked, so I'm going to change the workflow status to ready to pick. This is an optional step, but using workflow statuses can help you manage your orders. When I save the order, the order number is going to default based on the numbering scheme set up in Configuration Manager. However, you could manually enter in your own order number if you would like. Now that we have the order saved with all the necessary information and the workflow status is indicating that this is ready to pick, we can begin processing this order. The printer icon at the top of the sales order will print an order confirmation. The order confirmation form displays all the items on the order and it displays the ordered quantity. Again, it will not show the scheduled or back ordered quantities at all. If I scroll to the bottom of this order form, I will see that the totals match the total ordered amount. You can print the form by clicking the icon or click the downward arrow to the right of the icon 
to view other related forms as well as the email option. Next, I can print a pick ticket. The pick ticket will print the scheduled quantities for the orders. For example, on line 2, 20 were ordered, however 8 are on back order. Since I don't have those 8 available, I'm only going to pick the 12 I do have available. To print the pick ticket, we'll click the icon to the right of the printer icon. Again, as you can see, on the pick ticket displayed on the screen that Activate will display the quantity that should be picked. When printing the pick ticket, the workflow status on the sales order will update to be pick in progress. This is an important feature because once you've started picking the sales order, quantities or items should not change on the order. If you do need to edit an order by either adding or removing product or changing quantities, you should first take note of the workflow status. If it indicates it's pick in progress, then that means that this order is potentially being picked right now. If I were to change line two to be something else, uh, such as a different product, the incorrect item may get picked and shipped to the customer. By noting that the workflow status is pick in progress, that'll indicate to me that I need to make contact with someone in the warehouse who is doing the picking to let them know I've made changes to the order. This will prevent any orders from being incorrectly shipped. Now that we've picked the items, we can print a pack list. To do that, we'll click on the icon to the left of the Create Invoice button. Like the pick ticket, the pack list is going to show the scheduled quantities rather than the order quantities. The pack list would go inside the box and shipped with the items. With all three forms, you can click the downward arrow next to it to explore some more options related to those forms. For example, in the pack list menu, I'll also see a bill of lading and shipping labels. Now that I successfully picked and packed my order, I can invoice it. And to do that, I'll click the Create Invoice button. The invoice order window will appear. Here I can fill in any shipping information I have, such as the tracking number. I can also enter in payment information at this time if I hadn't already previously entered it. I can also enter in a discount. I could have entered the discount earlier on the sales order if I wanted as well. Clicking the invoice button will create the invoice. If I want to print it or email it, I would need to check the appropriate box. In this case, I do want to print out a copy of the invoice, so I'll check the print box. And you'll notice the preview box will appear, and that will be checked as well. But with that checked, now when I click invoice, the invoice will get created and it will print preview on the screen for me to view and print. Here you can see my invoice for the scheduled quantities. And if I scroll to the bottom, you will see my shipping instructions as well as my subtotal, tax, and total. Since I've partially invoiced this order, the status now changes to back ordered. The completed lines, or the lines that have shipped in full, are now hidden. However, if you need to see them, you can click the Show Completed Lines checkbox and they will appear. Line 2 has a quantity of 8 still on back order. However, during the sales order processing process, someone at our receiving workstation has received in 50 cases of B85. I now need to change this order status to be scheduled. And during that time, Activate will check for any new inventory. Since I did receive in 50 cases, these eight will get scheduled. As you can see, the eight are now scheduled. And there's nothing on back order. If I had items on back order before the invoicing step, and I wanted to check to see if any new inventory had been received in, I can do so by using the reset button. To do that, you would click edit, and then click the reset button to see the options. 
if I choose reset schedule, it will check for new inventory the way that changing the order status from back order to schedule does. So again, a scenario where that would come in handy is if you enter in an order and an item's on back order, but you know that the receiving of POs hasn't been completed for the day. You could wait till the POs are received in full. Then you could come to a sales order that has a back ordered item and hit reset schedule. Activate will check to see if there's any new inventory that could be allocated to this particular order. You'll also see I have reset prices. If you recall earlier in the video, this item defaulted to a price code of D. I changed the price code for this one line to be R. If I hit reset prices, activate will check to see if there's any existing price rules and it'll recalculate the price based on those rules. So for example, I will choose reset prices and the price code will change back to D because that is the default price code for customer Apex. And there you have it, it changed back to the price code of D and changed the price on this. So now we can click save. At the bottom right hand corner I see the order total for the entire order, however we've partially shipped this order. So if I wanted to see the amount for the scheduled quantity, I could click down the arrow next to order total to see that scheduled amount. And here you see that the scheduled amount is $116 plus our $9.33 for tax, giving us a $125.33 total. Since I wasn't able to ship this order in full, I am going to give a discount this time. I can give either a dollar discount or a percentage discount. One of those could be set as the default. However, you can always enter in either one. I typed in 10, so it's going to give a 10% discount. When I changed the order status from back order to scheduled, it reset the workflow status to be ready to pick. And again, we can go through the process of printing a pick ticket and a pack slip and creating an invoice. Once this order has been invoiced in full, this has been an overview of the sales order window in Activate. Thank you for joining me.